let's get started. Um, thank you all for joining us. We are here with Casey Thomas. She is the Assistant Director of Student Engagement at ASU, otherwise known as your future Sun Devils correspondent. Mm -hmm. um, she is the face behind at Future Sun Devils. So we want to start off and answer your questions and see what you guys want to know about the upcoming semester. So Casey, um, do you want to give us a little bit, a little bit of background, a little intro? Sure, yeah, sure. Um, like she said, my name is Casey Thomas, and I work in the admissions office here at Arizona State University, it's Mission Services. Um, we work with all undergraduate and graduate students to help you become students at Arizona State University and become Sun Devils. Hence, all of our social media accounts are tagged as future Sun Devils because we represent all of you. Uh, and we love when you post um, about your experiences as a future Sun Devil using hashtag future Sun Devil. So please keep that up as well. Um, I personally am originally from Tucson, Arizona, a little south of here. Chose um, bravely to attend Arizona State University and have loved it ever since. I've never left. And immediately after graduating, became an admissions counselor. Uh, telling other students why ASU is such a great place to be. And since then, I moved on to be able to do that uh, online with all of our student population. Uh, so you might see me posting as future Sun Devils or managing Devil to Devil, which is our private social network, or even being in our Facebook group, uh, ASU Class of 2018. So uh, I'm kind of all over the place, and I have that video series of You Asked videos. So certainly, if there are more videos you want to see, uh, let me know, because they're about questions that you guys ask. All right. Perfect. It looks like we have some questions coming in. You guys have a lot of good stuff. So let's see. Let's start with Taylor. Um, Taylor wants to know, can I use my actual meal plan somewhere else other than Taylor Place without using my maroon and gold dollars? That's a really good question. Um, you can use your meal plan at any dining hall. So let's say you travel between campuses, you can come to another dining hall on campus. Um, there are sometimes, especially during lunchtime, um, some meal deals with um, some of the dining facilities around campus. So definitely look out for that during Welcome Week. That's a really great insight that your community assistant can give you when you move into the residence hall of all the places that your meal plan works. Um, but then definitely you do have the maroon and gold dollars to fall back on. So if you can't, um, you know, if the place you want to eat doesn't use your meals, uh, you can use your maroon and gold dollars for that. But it is really nice because that means if you travel between campuses, let's say you came to Tempe for a game day uh, to cheer on the Sun Devils, uh, you could stop by one of the dining halls on campus and eat there too. So it does work on all four campuses. Great. And I want to just, um, two quick things. If you have a question, up at the top of your screen, if you scroll over to the left side, you will see um, a little chat box. You can throw it in there, um, and it will show up when we can see it. Now, I do want to touch upon that because you talked about traveling in between campuses. So how would a student who's on Tempe get to downtown and vice versa? Good question. We, you know, we like to say we're one university in many places, uh, and that means as a student, you have access to all of our campuses at any time. You're welcome to take classes multiple places, um, see friends, join clubs, all that kind of thing. Um, and we have lots of ways to get between campuses. The easiest and the cheapest is our free intercampus shuttle. It runs between all four campuses uh, every day of the week. I believe it starts running on weekends during the semester. So that helps you to get between campuses. We always make sure there are buses and shuttles around to get you uh, to any of our games because all of our sporting events are at the Tempe campus. Um, especially between the downtown and Tempe campuses, we do also have the light rail that you can ride. So the Phoenix metro area has a light rail. Um, students at ASU can get what's called a U-Pass through our parking and transit office, and that allows you to have free transportation on any Valley Metro bus or the light rail, which is really convenient to get you all over the place. I remember as a student at ASU, the 72 bus took me to Chandler Fashion Center and Scottsdale Fashion Square so I could get my shopping done on the weekend and so that was a lot of fun. So those are two easy ways. Um, you are welcome to bring a car to campus, although it is not necessary. If you do that, there is also cross parking on campuses as well. So if you want to travel between campuses that way too. But for my money, because it's free, I would go on the intercampus shuttle. Um, and all of the intercampus shuttles have free Wi-Fi. So you can be you could be doing homework. Maybe you didn't get homework done on time. More likely than not, you're probably checking Facebook um, or surfing the net, finding some fun things to, to laugh at and enjoy while you're on the shuttle. So it's it's very convenient. I take it between campuses when I go between campuses as a staff person. So it's only ASU people on the shuttle, and it's really convenient. Perfect. So Danica, thanks Danica, she wants to know if you can have Sensi's, the candles, in your dorm. Um, you cannot have any open flame in your residence hall, and you cannot have any hot plates. So I know there are some um, candle warmers out there on the market. You cannot bring those into your residence hall. So no open flame, 
and no um, uh, heat source, no open heat source. So um, if you have any candles that somehow pres you know use a battery to create their scent, then you can do that. But otherwise, no open flame. Okay. Taylor has another question. He wants to know how many watts the water cooler can be if they bring their own instead of renting one. Putting you on the spot. That is super specific. Um, and I believe that information uh, should be listed in your e-packet that you got, um, or certainly in the housing handbook that is found at housing.asu.edu. Um, that is not one of the fun facts that I have on the top of my head, because just a few short years ago when I lived on campus, we didn't get water coolers. So that is a newer, fancier uh, opportunity that you have. Um, do know that there are um, water stations all over campus. So we certainly have water fountains. Um, each residence hall has a kitchen so you can refill water that way too. But more and more places on campus we're getting um, water fountains that actually have a reusable water bottle um, station. So it's filtered water that you just hold up your water bottle and it fills it up. Um, so you won't be without water um, because it's such an important thing here in Arizona. We do get a little warm. <laughs> uh, so it is important to stay hydrated. There's plenty of water all over campus for you. Perfect. And Julian wants to know, since his orientation is on the 12th, um, is he going to get stuck with early classes or so-so professors since most of the classes have been filled? We don't have so-so professors. This is ASU. We have the best, the best at everything. Yes, all of our professors. 98% of our professors have their highest terminal degree. So you're not going to get a so-so professor. Um, rate my professor is not always correct, so do keep that in mind. Um, no, you're not necessarily going to get early classes. We certainly encourage students to attend early. Um, to make sure that they always have full availability at all class times. It's possible to get an early class, but one of the nice things about ASU is once you've attended orientation and you've registered for some classes, you then have open access to the course registration system. So anytime between the 12th, after you've registered for your first classes, all the way through the first week of classes, we have wow. a drop ad period in the first week of classes, you can actually go in and adjust your schedule. And a lot of students do that, so let's say you sign up for a 7.30 a.m. calculus class, doesn't sound like the most fun. You can be checking class registration and find that 1.30 p.m. class. When one student drops, you can sneak in and grab that section. So it's still very flexible. You have a lot of freedom. The only thing that you might run into um, is that some of our colleges do put you in what we call a cluster. So you would take your ASU 101 class and maybe one or two other classes all with the same 19 students. It's a really great benefit because it means you start seeing the same people in all your classes, but those little cohorts are uh, tied together. So if you were to drop one of those, let's say, three classes, you lose all three. So do ask that at orientation to see if any of your classes are tied together and if that would kind of block your schedule in. Um, but otherwise, you have total freedom to play around and adjust your schedule um, right up through the first week of classes. Okay, so we have a, a question here. I'm going to read it, but I know due to FERPA issues, if you can't fully answer it, don't feel pressured. Okay. Um, the question is, I'm currently coming in as a freshman, but I've mm -hmm. sent my transcripts, hoping to get some credits which will make me a transfer student. Will mm -hmm. I still be assured a guaranteed in the housing section, Good Calvary question. East in my case? So uh, the one thing that I would clarify is if you just graduated high school, let's say you graduated high school in May, which is really how we usually classify a freshman, uh, is that you just graduated high school and you're immediately coming to Arizona State University. If you did some college credit while you were in high school, you are not counted as a transfer student, but that credit does transfer. So you do definitely want to send us that transcript. It can count for some credit for you, um, but you're still considered a freshman, so you still have all the, the freshman um, requirements and benefits. So yes, you would still go on campus, all of that. We don't change your um, designation to transfer. If you graduated high school a while ago and since attended another school and have some transfer credit, then you are considered a transfer student and getting that credit is going to have us change some um, uh, some of your processes. So keep that in mind. I, I assume you're probably uh, recently graduated from high school and really got a head start on school and got some college credit, which is awesome and fantastic. I know students who get a complete associate's degree um, by the time they graduate. So definitely useful. We absolutely want to take that credit and help it apply to your classes um, and your time here at ASU, make it a little bit more efficient, maybe a little more economical. So it's definitely a good choice. But um, if you did that credit while still in high school, it will not affect your status as a freshman. So you will still get to live in Calgary East. Perfect. We'll keep your questions coming. We have plenty of time with Casey still. But let me throw one out there that uh, I've seen a lot. So what's the deal with scholarships? Can, can kids still apply? Can I get them? Is there money? 
Right. What's the deal? Right. Especially right now, money I want your charges are due. You're starting to notice there might be a slight, a slight gap. Right. Um, yes, you absolutely still can get a scholarship. Uh, we have what's called New American University scholarships, and they are based on your um, GPA, class rank, and test score. And right now, you can still affect your test score and improve that test score. And if you improve that test score, we can increase your scholarship. So it's still right up until. I believe we're, we're saying around August 20th, so you have right up until uh, right before classes start, if we get a new test score that bumps you into a new scholarship bracket, we would give you a higher scholarship. You can go to scholarships.asu.edu, uh, and then you can go to the scholarship estimator, and that will help you um, see what kind of test score you might need. At ASU, we do offer the ACT residual um, every Friday, just about every Friday, so you can come on campus and take an ACT test with us. The score is only good at ASU, um, but that could make a difference for you for a merit-based scholarship. So scholarships.asu.edu slash estimator, and you can see if a new test score might make a difference for you in terms of a merit-based scholarship. On top of that, there are still some scholarships listed on the main scholarship website that you can apply for. I also encourage you during your freshman year to talk with your academic college because they have a lot of scholarships that you can apply for and are only eligible for as a current student. So if you don't have you know, maybe you took out some loan this year, this next year, this whole freshman year, you can actually be working with your college and applying for some scholarships as a current student that you maybe weren't eligible for now as an incoming student. Very good. Mm -hmm. We have another question. Um, it's, is WUI guaranteed? So why don't you start by explaining to us what WUI is and sure. then answering that question. Yeah, so WUI is the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. Uh, students from the Western United States, which are the Dakotas down in New Mexico and West, um, can participate in it, and it's a tuition discount program. Uh, there's about 90 of our majors that qualify for it, and it's for degree programs that are on our West, Polytechnic, and downtown Phoenix campuses. So if you're a Tempe student, you're not going to be in WUI. Um, but what it does is it... Uh, reduces your tuition cost in those degree programs, so you're only paying one and a half times in-state tuition as opposed to full out-of-state tuition. Um, so it's a savings of almost $10,000. It's a pretty wow. big discount. Um, there are requirements. You have to stay in good academic standing, and you have to stay in a major that is qualifying for WUI. So um, when you apply, you have to have at least a 3.0 um, to even be eligible for WUI for us to give that to you as your first year, but to keep it, you have to stay in, in good academic standing, and you do have to stay in a major that is really qualifying. So let's say you found a degree program at the West Campus that qualified. You just got some new interests. You found a program at Tempe that does not qualify. If you did change your major, you would no longer get the Louie discount. Um, but it is such a significant discount that I do like to say that it's called Louie because you go, Louie, because you're so excited about the discount. Louie! I get very excited about these things. Let's talk about moving. Everyone is very excited about moving. Yeah. So what would you say are your top five things to pack? I know you have the video, but what would Ooh. you say top five things? Yeah, top five things to pack. Um, I, I have a couple things not to pack. Don't pack all your winter clothes. All right, so one, winter is not that brutal here in Arizona. I don't know if you've heard, we're a desert, so we don't get that cold. Um, but also, you're going to have plenty of opportunities for mom and dad to send you some care packages. So what I would encourage you to do, if you do pack now, pack up some things you do want to bring now, and then maybe pack a couple boxes that you can say, hey, mom, send box number two to me uh, in October, in January, or something like that. So um, most of you will also probably go home over Thanksgiving or winter break, and so you might decide that you don't need um, all of the, you don't need to pack for a whole year at ASU because you will have that time to go home. For that, come ladies, back. keep the shoes to a minimum. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you don't need that many shoes. Um, I will say almost everyone overpacks clothes, and you end up being in a sweatshirt and sweatpants walking around campus. So um, don't feel like you need to bring your whole closet. I, it's very hard to pare down. I understand that. Um, a couple of things I would bring. Um, depending on your residence hall, I got to live in community style housing, which is the Arcadia housing now. Um, so definitely a shower caddy and, and flip flop shower shoes, a robe. I really enjoyed having a robe no matter what. So wherever you live, bring a robe. Um, bring some mementos from home. You, we definitely want you to stay in touch with your friends and family, have some favorite photos, you know, get, get some fun decorations for your room. Um, but do remember that we want you to make new friends and, and really get out into the residence hall and out on campus meeting new people. So have some mementos that are good conversation starters. So when someone comes into your room, they can say, oh, that's really cool. What's that from? And you can describe it. That will be really helpful. Um, one other really big thing, extra long twin bed sheets. Yes. All right, so the beds here are longer than probably your bed at home. 
Um, so definitely do that. One thing I would encourage, though, don't feel like you need to pack all of your toiletries and all of the, the bathroom necessities and things like that because we really have a lot of opportunities during move-in weekend for you to go to some big box stores like Target or Walmart and purchase those things. So you don't need to have your mini fridge already bought or anything like that. You can actually get those things when you're here. So it's going to help you pack light for sure. So would a mini fridge be on your list of things to pack? Um, a mini fridge is something that is when you really want to talk with your roommate. Um, and I know some of you don't have access to your roommate's contact information, and so I definitely wouldn't buy it yet. I'd wait till you move in so you can and talk with your roommate and see maybe they already brought one, um, or you can go in on one. ASU does allow you to rent a mini fridge and microwave, so that could be convenient for you, and you can sign up for that at move-in. Um, or you can get the mini fridge here. Do keep in mind, ASU does encourage only one mini fridge per room. All right, so we are a sustainable institution. We try to be um, as energy efficient as possible, and mini fridges just take up a lot of energy. So mm -hmm. um, try to bring one. Get a big one. Get one with a little, little freezer on top. Um, but definitely uh, work it out with your roommate because you don't want to end up with two of things like microwaves and uh, mini fridges. Okay. And you said decorations. Um, mm -hmm. Andy wants to know decorations. Yes. Andy wants to know if uh, we can bring string lights into the res hall. Absolutely, yeah. Um, anything that can plug into the outlet. So that's definitely safe. What you do want to keep track of is how you hang them in your room. So you're not allowed to make any holes in the walls. And some of the, some of the walls are concrete, so it would be hard to do anyway. But um, I'm a big fan of command strips. Yes. Command strips can do anything. You can get the command strips with hooks on them. You can get command strips that are made specifically for posters or picture frames. Uh, and it's actually how I hang a lot of stuff even at my house now. Uh, so I, I own a house, and I don't put holes in my walls. So um, definitely keep that in mind. Anything you put on the walls needs to be able to be removed with no damage to the walls um, when you move out. So go load up on command strips. Ask for that as a graduation gift if you have to, if anyone's still waiting to buy you something or take some of your grad money to buy command strips. But that'll help you put up decorations for sure. Another question, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are probably wondering this. So Danica wants to know how big are the rooms in San Pablo? Because uh, apparently there's not a ton of info about that. So maybe maybe just not even specifically San Pablo, but how big would you say the res halls are in general? Yeah. So the residence halls are definitely big enough for you to feel comfortable. Um, with another person because almost every residence hall, almost every room is a two-person room and either you share a bathroom with two people next door to you or there's a bathroom down the hall. So do expect to be sharing your room with one other person. Um, we don't put three people in a room. You're never going to have three people in a room. Um, and one of the reasons there's not a lot of measurements is because um, I, I'm sure you've seen some of our residence halls are kind of a funky shape. They maybe have triangular uh, features, and so not every room is consistent. And we want to give you an overview of a typical room. And so if we actually put measurements, we get people who say, you said this was 40 inches and it's only 38. So we don't want to you know, list out 15 different room, res you know, room sizes and hope you find the one that you were in. So we really uh, just keep it a little bit more simple. And when you go on housing.asu.edu and you click on the residence halls, it does show a sample floor plan. It gives you an idea of how much space is in a bed, um, if there's a desk or a dresser, as well as the closet space in each of those. Where can we find that floor plan? Uh, you can go to housing.asu.edu. And then when you click on the residence halls, you can go down to the hall that you have. Um, I know it doesn't have a ton of photos and a ton of measurements, but um, like I said, that's why I don't want you to pack a ton of things before you get here um, because you can then go to Target, you can go to Walmart. We, on Tempe, we even have a Walmart on campus, which makes it pretty convenient. Um, and there's an Ikea nearby, too. So you can get storage and things like that once you get here. Um, and again, maybe go in with your roommate on some of those things that you don't need more than one of. So let's talk about roommates. Okay. Um, assuming everyone is going to love their roommate. If for some reason they don't, mm -hmm. um, there's a problem for some reason, what are our options? Do we have options? Sure, sure. Um, definitely if you get into your residence hall, you meet your roommate, you're, you're giving it a go, you've, you've tried a few things, um, one of the first things that happens when you move in is you get a roommate agreement. And your, you and your roommate should sit down and fill that out together. And it's things like, what's your cleaning schedule going to be? Or what's your sleep schedule or quiet time? Um, how are you going to uh, handle disagreements or arguments? And that can be really helpful. I remember my sophomore year, um, this is kind of an embarrassing story of myself, but my roommate and I uh, knew each other my sophomore year. I, I made friends with her during freshman year, and we got in. And I got into the room first, and I filled out the roommate agreement without her because we were such good friends. And I put in the how we were going to handle disagreements, I said, all 
disagreements will be handled through sumo wrestling. And it was so funny, and it actually worked. So there were a couple times we were starting to get pretty upset about something, and we would just get into a sumo wrestler position, and we'd start laughing, and it totally diffused the situation, and we'd say, you know what, let's stop talking about this and go to dinner. So, you know, trying to find ways to diffuse situations. Um, it's really important with the roommate that um, both of you, you know, I, a lot of us look at it internally and say, I'm a little nervous, I'm a little scared, I don't know this person, and we want to remember that that person is equally nervous and scared. Um, my mom told me, she's like, Casey, you're probably hard to live with. I was like, thanks, Mom, uh, having lived with you for 18 years. I appreciate that. But it really made me remember that I, I needed to be tolerant, I needed to be compassionate, and I needed to be considerate of my roommate's needs as well. So try all of that first, right? So as you're, as you're moving with your roommate, see, you know, what each other's boundaries are, what, you know, kind of cleanliness you're going to have, quiet hours, things like that, um, and certainly be making friends. Like, go to dinner together the first time, and then also be branching out, making more friends. If it's just not working out, you know, a, a few weeks in, it just seems like you're not meshing well, I really encourage you to go to your community assistant. Each residence hall, each floor on each residence hall has at least one community assistant, and they're an upperclassman student in your college who um, can tell you how to handle, how to, how to do some conflict resolution and how to work with your roommate. Um, if for some reason there's something that goes beyond that, it, it's just really not working out, you can go to your um, uh, community assistant director who is a professional staff person who lives in the residence hall um, and work with them. And if necessary, we can move you and, and place you in another room. So uh, do keep that in mind. We're never, you're, you're never going to be stuck in a situation that's just unbearable. Um, but we do ask that you put your full effort into making it work. Perfect. We just got a great question from Genesis. Is there still time to be accepted? That is a great question. Uh, yes, we are still accepting applications for the fall 14 semester. So we know there are students that summertime hits and they realize that she's a place for them. So you can apply now. Uh, be sure to pay your application fee and submit your transcripts as soon as possible. Um, we are prioritizing fall uh, applications right now since we know that semester is coming up as, uh, very quickly. But with only a, about a month left, a little less than a month, um, we're cutting it close. So you might uh, it might take uh, a couple weeks for you to get admitted. So keep that in mind. It could be you know a couple days before classes start that you're getting admitted. So uh, everything could happen very quickly. If you apply now, uh, and get admitted, you want really want to be on top of your steps and get all of your next steps done. Especially as an incoming freshman, you have an enrollment deposit, we want to make sure you meet with an advisor, you can take your math placement test, send us your MMR immunizations. There's a lot of steps. You're going to want to be on top of it as soon as you get that acceptance. You first see your acceptance on myASU, so my.asu.edu, your personalized portal at ASU, and then you'll also get a letter in the mail. Perfect. How long is winter break? Oh, how long is winter break? We're already trying to be on break, guys. I know, uh, man. Some people are trying to buy tickets now. I get it. Um, winter break, break is about a month. Um, we, we've gone through some changes in the last few years. It's been two weeks. It's been four weeks. But it's about one month. Um, the hardest thing is that you don't actually know when your last final is going to be. So we have finals for an entire week in December. And um, you might not actually know when your last final is until closer to the semester. So. I don't really encourage you buying plane tickets right now to go home. Um, I would wait until you get closer to the end of the semester. You've talked with all your professors and found out when that final date is going to be. Um, but for the residence halls, they do encourage you to be moved out within 24 hours of your last um, your last final. And moved out just means go home for the winter break, not move all your stuff out of your hall. You still have the same room when you move in uh, when you move back in January, so you can leave all the big bulk and stuff. But um, when you when you leave for the winter break, it's usually within 24 hours of your last final. Um, and then you come back the weekend before classes start. Classes usually start on a Monday or Tuesday. A lot of times it's right around Martin Luther King Day, so sometimes you get that extra Monday off. Which is nice. And there is a break in fall, right? There's October yeah. 11th through the 14th. There's mm -hmm. just so a short break. Yeah, so we actually get a two-day, a four-day weekend uh, in October as well as a, as a quick mini break. So that's kind of nice. And that can either be a time for you to go home. Maybe you need to kind of recharge and see your family again. Um, or it could be your first opportunity to... Um, take a really quick little trip or something with some of your new friends that you've made. So it's, it's kind of a really nice break part in that uh, fall semester. And then in the spring and March, we do have a full week off for spring break. Perfect. So this might be a tough one to answer, but roughly how many outlets do we have in the dorms? Yeah, that is a good question. Each residence hall is a little different. Um, I would expect you to probably have uh, at least one per wall. 
um, for the most part, and then your bathrooms will also have outlets because uh, we know you can get a little bit every day, right? So <laughs> that takes um, electricity as well. Um, but you are welcome to bring a surge protector and things like that to give you a few more outlets. You know, just bring it in your computer and maybe your music system and all kinds of things that can quickly add up. Um, you know, if you bring your television and your DVD, your DVD player and things like that. So um, you can bring a surge protector. There should probably be an out about an outlet per wall. Okay. So we talked about candles and we talked about heat. Um, is there anything else that is a big red flag in the rest holes that we cannot bring? Um, the thing that comes to mind is pets. So I know, you know, you might have a cat named Sparky. You're really close to them, but they are not allowed in the residence halls. Um, basically, fish are are what are allowed, um, or service animals. So of course, if you have documentation that you you do need a service animal to get around on campus, then that would absolutely be allowed. But um, really, any other pet outside of fish in a 10-gallon or smaller tank uh, is, is not allowed. Okay. Very Don't good. sneak them in either. <laughs> your, your community assistants will find them. Perfect. Let's talk about on-campus jobs for a second. So I know that uh, on-campus jobs are a good way to make money, of course, a little extra money on the side, but why don't you tell us what else is a benefit and then how do we go about doing that? Good. Yeah. Uh, student jobs are a great resource, not only for making money, but for making connections and meeting new people. Um, I had student jobs my whole time at ASU. It helped me gain a lot of knowledge that I now use. I still use every day talking to you guys. Um, so student jobs. You can go online to my.asu.edu and click on the Campus Services link. It's the tab at the top near your profile. Um, and when you get to that page, there's a, a box for jobs and careers. And there's a student employment link. Uh, and you can go in there. It's a whole portal that lists student jobs. That's all it has is student jobs. Some are listed as hourly jobs, and others are listed as work-study only jobs. And um, I will say they, they are well paid, because some people think oh, that yeah. the, the hourly on campus are not well paid, but they're, it's competitive, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen jobs as high as $15 an hour for students. So, yeah, it's definitely well paid. Um, usually goes between minimum wage, $7.90, up to $15. Um, so keep that in mind. But you, there are jobs right now. You can uh, you go online, look at those jobs. You can even apply for them right now. Um, but we will have a job fair on each campus during Welcome Week. So a lot of places that are looking for student workers, a lot of different departments on campus will show up there and you can apply there. You certainly can wait until you get here to apply for jobs. Uh, we have actually about 10,000 student workers every year, so there are plenty of jobs for you to find. Benefits of working on campus are that when you're working on campus in a department on campus, the very first thing, they know you're a student first. Mm -hmm. So some jobs even allow you to do homework while you're there. You know, if you work the front desk. Sure. I know. You work the front desk at your residence hall, you're mostly there to check IDs and hand out pots and pans or um, pool table accessories or something like that. Um, they can allow you to do some homework uh, while you're there manning that desk. Um, but also, you can say to your supervisor, I have a really huge uh, test coming up. I need to write a paper. Can I leave early today, or I can't come in today? And they're going to be very accommodating to say, yes, that's OK. You know? And you could probably get from your classes to your job pretty quickly, because oh, yeah. they're probably right next to each other. Yeah, so you're within five minutes from class to your job. It makes everything so convenient. So you don't really have the excuse to be late for class. <laughs> you can't say, oh, I had to find parking. I had to get somewhere, because you're already on campus. Mm -hmm. um, so those are all some really great benefits. Plus, you learn a lot of skills. You learn how to be a professional. Um, student jobs on campus are a little bit more lenient to help you learn those skills. So if you're not really great at your job to begin with, they're more likely to coach you through it and make you better than just say, you're not working out. Um, and because it's convenient, you're more likely to be successful in your classes, too. You don't have that um, uh, schedule hanging over your head that's, you know, oh, my supervisor can't let me be late. I can't miss the shift. There's some more flexibility. Mm -hmm. A couple other benefits. There's a big thing. I've had a lot of questions lately about work study and how that, that works. So any student can apply for an hourly job on the ASU website. Work study jobs um, will be listed as work study only. Now, if you have work study on your financial aid package, you can apply for hourly jobs too, and it is possible your work study could be used to help pay for that job. But um, if you do apply for a work study only job, you do need to have work study listed as part of your financial aid package. And work study is financial aid. Basically, how it works is if you have work study on your financial aid, you need to find a job on campus that will uh, use your work study and either apply for work study only jobs or when you apply for hourly jobs, ask, will I also be able to use my work study here? And then when you get that job, your work study pays out in paycheck increments. So it's part of your paycheck. 
Um, so I, I know a lot of students see, oh, I have you know $2,500 in work study. Um, that's not going to come out as $2,500 right away to pay your charges. So that's really meant for you to be putting in your savings account to use towards charges you have during the semester or to pay towards your tuition and fees for the next semester. So keep that in mind. For you, it's all the same. So whether you had an hourly job or a work study job, if they're both $10 an hour, your paycheck's going to look exactly the same. It's all the same money. Mm -hmm. Where it comes in handy is that um, a work study student has about two thirds of their paycheck is paid through their work study funding as opposed to from the um, payroll of the department. So this really gets noticed when it comes time to uh, file for income taxes because financial aid is not taxable. So if you're getting, it's about a 70, 30% um, switch about seventy percent of your paycheck would be from your work study funds. Thirty percent would be from your department. So if you if you did make enough money on campus to be paying income taxes, that seventy percent is not taxed. It's not considered income. So only thirty percent of what you made is considered income. So it definitely helps you um, financially that way. So work study is a great thing if you have it. It's awesome. I know a lot of on campus uh, employers love work study because you only cost us thirty percent of a full student worker. So uh, we're, we love work study students. We ha we're so happy to hire work study students. Um, and if you don't have work study right now in your financial aid, you are always able to contact financial aid and see if there's a possibility for you to get some work study. There's not always, um, it does it does kind of change some of your financial aid a little bit, but we're always happy to check for you and see if you have that aid. But do know that it's not going to disperse at the beginning of the semester with your charges. So if you're banking on that $2,500 to pay part of your tuition, it's going to come out in paychecks every two weeks. It's not going to come out as one lump sum. Perfect. All right. Let's talk about books. Sure. How do you find out what you need for your classes? Where do you get them? If you're an out-of-state student coming to ASU, is there going to be a problem getting them? Right. Um, so ASU has its own bookstore. It's called the Sunnyville Campus Stores. Uh, and you can go to bookstore.asu.edu. The easiest way to see what books you need is to go on your MyASU page. I'm uh, sensing a theme. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed. I say MyASU a lot. Your MyASU page is your personalized portal. It's got everything you need on it. Um, under your class schedule, it lists. Uh, has a link called, I believe it's My Books or Book List, something like that. You click on that and it pulls up all of the books that professors have requested for the classes you're currently registered for. Some of you have been going on there, you don't have all your books listed yet. Turns out professors procrastinate too. So um, I know, it's so weird. Um, so do keep that in mind, keep checking that book list. But what's nice is from that book list, it connects directly to our bookstore. And so from there, you can reserve all the books on your list and you can either have them sent to your home or you can have them waiting for you on campus, on the campus of your major, wherever you're going. Um, and they, they can all be there so when you move in during that welcome week, you can come in, pick up your stack of books, pay for them if you haven't, um, and, and take them away. The bookstore also offers tons of ebook versions. Uh, if any of our textbooks have an ebook version, you can get the ebook version instead of the paper textbook. Um, and it also allows you to rent textbooks instead of buying them. Not all textbooks are rentable if they are. Um, a special edition or they contain an access code or some computer CD or a workbook that you have to use. This is a lot of your lab sciences are going to have some custom workbooks you got to buy. Those are not rentable because you're going to use them, you're going to write in them, um, you have to keep them, you have to buy them. So keep that in mind. At the end of the semester, you can then sell your books back or return them if you rented them. Um, and uh, the bookstore will give you a portion of what you paid for them back if they're still going to be used next semester. The ASU bookstore is the only bookstore in the world that is guaranteed to have every book you need for every class ever wow. at ASU. Um, so sometimes there are books that are only offered through the ASU bookstore because a professor maybe wrote the book. That's what's nice about having expert faculty. Um, and so the book's only available at the bookstore. You're welcome to search around, use other websites like Amazon Marketplace or Chegg or things like that. But keep in mind that if you order a book online and it comes to you, you're less likely to be able to return it. I hear a lot of students give the advice that, oh, I'm going to wait and buy my books after my first week of classes to see what my professors really are using. Um, you can go that route, but they, any bookstore can run out of the books for that. And if you're waiting for them to be ordered online and sent to you, that could take a while. And if you buy the book at the bookstore, get to class and the professor says, oh, you know what, we're not going to use that, you still have a 14-day period in which to return your books for a full refund. So my advice is your first semester day issue, it's enough that you're going to college. Use the ASU bookstore so that books are not a hassle, they're not a stressful thing. And then as you get more comfortable with the ASU and how, how you're going to communicate with your professors and find out about books, 
then you know look at some other resources if you need to. But the ASU bookstore is really convenient. Perfect. Let's talk about the Fall Welcome concert. <gasps> yes. Mac Miller is coming. Um, are tickets still available? How do I get them? Yeah. And and can I sit? Can I stand? What's the deal? How does it work? Right? We all want to know. Um, can I meet him? I mean, can what, I meet him? Oh, gosh. I don't know if you can meet him. I wish. I want to meet him. Um, so the Fall Welcome concert is the Tuesday of Welcome Week. It's two days before classes start. Um, and it's open to all incoming students. So regardless of your campus, you're going to spend most of Tuesday on the Tempe campus anyway. It's my favorite day of Fall Welcome Week. It's actually called Sun Devil Tuesday um, because we have your college assemblies. You go to Sun Devil Welcome uh, where you get to sit with your college and cheer and be really loud and learn the fight song. Oh, so much fun. The, the marching band teaches you the fight song. It's really fun. Um, and then at that night, we have the Fall Welcome concert. The Fall Welcome concert is free, which like is very free. important. Um, and you get one ticket. So if you register for a ticket, it's only for you. You can't bring your friends. Uh, you can't bring people who don't attend ASU, any of that. How you get a ticket is that you can either go on to Devil to Devil, which is our private social network on my ASU, or you can go to um, the Fall Welcome Concert website, which is eoss.asu.edu slash Fall Welcome Concert. Uh, and you can go on there, and there's a, a way to reserve tickets on there as well. Once you go in, you log in with my ASU, you reserve your ticket, and then uh, the week of Welcome Week, you'll be able, you'll be given information on where to go to pick up your ticket. So, so, so if I want to sit with you, right, can yeah. we do that? If we were to go together, if we were ASU students and we're going to the concert, um, I would need to be standing in line to pick up my ticket with you. Yes. All right. So what you're doing right now is reserving your spot to get a ticket because there's only maybe 9,000 tickets and there's 76,000 students at ASU. So that's why you're reserving the ticket right now. During Welcome Week when you come in to get your ticket, that's when you're actually getting your assigned seat. So you're not choosing an assigned seat right now. The seats are first come, first serve, um, and everybody gets an assigned place to sit or stand. I'm told there will be some floor seats, but I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't think that's part of the assignment. So we'll see how that works as we get closer. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, but so when you go, be with a group of people that you want to be standing near for the concert because they're handing out the tickets in order. So if I get row one, seat one, the next person is getting row one, seat two. So as long as you're together with your friends, when you go get your tickets, you will be sitting next to each other at the concert. And it's going to be so much fun. Everyone should go. Perfect. Olivia has a really great question. She wants to know if FAFSA, I can't speak FAFSA, FAFSA applications are still being accepted. Good question. Yes, of course, always. Um, we definitely want you filing your FAFSA. It's your free application for federal student aid. So it's free. Every person should fill out a FAFSA. Uh, it's the only way the ASU Financial Aid Office can provide you with any sort of need-based aid. So you can still get a merit scholarship from ASU without a FAFSA, but there's no grant money, there's no student loans, federal student loans, um, which I know not everybody wants to be taking out a ton of student loans, but they are a really great option if you do need that extra money to attend uh, a university or college. So definitely file your FAFSA right now. Same thing, we're, we are definitely prioritizing for the fall, so get that submitted online at FAFSA.gov, and then you can list ASU. Our school code is 001081, uh, I believe, Oof. I think. Um, numbers you memorize, right? So uh, make sure it gets sent to ASU, and then be checking your MyASU page for any priority tasks, because some students for their FAFSA get asked to be verified they don't ask to be verified. They are chosen to be verified. And so if we're asking for any tax returns or um, verification forms, you want to give those to us as soon as possible. Otherwise, uh, it's going to pull up your financial aid. Okay. We have a, a great question, in my opinion, because I love Barrett. But um, <laughs> so if we have a meal plan, mm -hmm. um, right, can, you, can you use it at Barrett? Because uh, our, our Question asker heard that Barrett has the best food, and I will say that that may not be a false statement. <laughs> I won't choose All sides, food. but if I end up at Barrett, yeah. I won't turn it down. I'll tell you that much. Barrett, that's where it's at, right? If I end up at Barrett, I will definitely eat there. They have um, gelato, okay? And sushi on Thursdays. I, you can't be there. And the stir fry, and the guy's so nice. Yeah. You'll, you'll, learn. you'll learn. So, uh, yes, like I said, your meal plans can be used anywhere on any of our four campuses, but. Because of things like fresh gelato and sushis on, on Thursdays, um, the Barrett meal plan is more expensive. Uh, and part of that is because the Barrett dining hall 
um, is really charged with being as sustainable and locally grown as possible. So we know organic food can cost a little bit more, but because that is um, something that the Barrett Honors College decided was really important, that is going into the residence hall dining hall. So keep that in mind. Um, but the food is delicious. Food, I actually will I eat in any general, dining hall yeah. and love it. Um, I love all you care to eat dining because yes. I can go back for seconds or try something or anything like that. So you can go to Barrett. If you do not have a Barrett dining um, meal plan, it is a couple extra dollars. So it's going to take one of your meals and a couple MNG in order for you to eat there. Um, but all Barrett students also do come with some guest passes. And so there's a reason some Barrett kids are very, very popular is to get free food. Um, I certainly make friends with Barrett staff for the same reason, because they could get some meal plans that I maybe can get a guest pass into the dining hall as well. So um, that might be one way if you don't want to be using your own meal plan is find a, find a Barrett friend who has a guest pass that they want to get, use to help you come into the dining hall. Mm -hmm. um, I encourage everyone to eat at Barrett once, but you should eat at, on every campus. Yeah, every student should visit every campus because each one's really unique and fun. Um, and what's great about dining at ASU is that in the dining halls, it's mostly um, cooked to order. So every dining hall has stations where there is a personal chef there to cook your omelet the way you want, your stir fry the way you want, your yeah, pasta dish the way you want. Oh I know. You can get sandwiches built the way you want. So you know, if you're someone who doesn't like mushrooms, you never have to eat another mushroom in your life coming to ASU. So it's very personalized no matter what residence hall or dining facility you're at. Perfect. Let's circle back to move in. Okay. Um, when <laughs> I important. When yeah. we actually, when it comes time to move in, mm -hmm. um, how do we go about doing that? Is there is there a place that students should stop first? Can they go directly to the res hall? Is there staff to help when you get there? Because you know it's hot. I mean, yeah, that's a really good question. What are the rules? Um, I always tell students, read your e-packets. Mm -hmm. So every student with a housing assignment has been given a welcome e-packet. It has every piece of information in it. Perfect. Most important, it has your steps to get what we call your fast pass. So you have to do some pre-check-in stuff. Um, and you get a fast pass, so when you come on your move-in date and time, we're so specific, we give you an hour specifically in which you should come uh, so we can best provide service for you. You bring that fast pass, and it really makes your process easy. So, for instance, at the Tempe campus, um, move-in tends to be your first stop is at Wells Fargo Arena, and that's where you come in with your fast pass. You make sure you get your key, you sign up for all kinds of, you know, if you want the water cooler or you want a mini fridge to rental or things like that, you do all of that there. And then um, they send you to your residence hall, give you a very temporary parking pass, and there are very helpful people, uh, professional movers there to unload your car for you, and they will take it up to your room for you. So all you have to do is get your car, go park it, and then come back to your residence hall, go up to your room, and all of your stuff is there for you. That is why it is so important for you to move in on the date and time that we tell you to um, because it is meant to be as streamlined as possible. It's so easy. If you move in um, early or you come in at a time that your residence hall isn't scheduled to be moving in, you might be lugging that stuff into your room on your own. So if at all possible, please come during your assigned move-in date and time. I know things happen. Sometimes you've already booked your flight. You're already going to be here early. Um, I know a lot of you have uh, camp. To go to. You have E2 mm -hmm. Camp, Camp Carry, Leadership Launch, Early Start, all kinds of things. Um, be working with your camp directors or um, with the housing office for things like Leadership Launch and Early Start um, for what those move-in processes are because um, we do have processes for that as well. We know there is a large number of students who come for Early Start and all of those camps are really important as well. So um, definitely be asking those questions and getting that clarified for you. Um, but move-in is precision. It is so well scheduled that you really don't want to be messing with the system and, and coming early or coming at a different time if you can help it. Really, that date and time you come in, you'll be moved in in like half an hour and just be shocked that it was so fast. Mm -hmm. And no lugging stuff around. The yeah. You don't have to, you have to unload well, your own stuff. You sweat. Yeah. There you go. It's pretty nice. Even better. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about uh, sports for a second. Yeah. Um, talk to me about students and football teams. Yes. I hope you're all ready to go to the football games. By the way, what do we wear? What color do we wear on game day? Well, it depends on the game, but most of the time we wear gold. Fridays are gold days. Fridays we wear gold. Game days we wear gold. We will have one game that is called the Maroon Monsoon, in which we will wear maroon. And we do have one game that is a blackout game, in which we will all wear black. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Don't worry. You will know in advance which games those are. Um, but 
one of the things that's happened this year is that um, the undergraduate student government, the Associated Students of ASU, um, actually approved a new athletic fee. And what's great about this is it actually gives uh, all ASU students access to all athletic events. No so more no more separate buying tickets to go to football and basketball. Previously, student ASU students had access to all uh, ASU athletic events outside of football and men's basketball. Now everything's included. Um, we're also devoting 25% of each uh, sporting event arena to students. So mm -hmm. our student sections are growing, which is great because more students are probably going to be coming to the games now that it's open to you automatically. Um, there will be, so keep Keep in mind, I don't know the whole process yet, but there will be um, check-in things to get wristbands, make sure you want a ticket um, for the student section, things like that. So keep that in mind for those games, because you know even with a giant student section, it wouldn't fit every single student at ASU. So we would definitely want to make sure only the students who want to go to the game are there and they're getting the, the wristbands and things to get in mm -hmm. to the section. But yeah. it's so much fun to be in the student section. You can pick up those tickets day of, generally speaking, right? You yeah, to, yeah. Pick them up? Absolutely. So, and usually, I mean, this is what your sun card's for. So your ticket is actually your sun card. Um, and then things like football games and stuff and basketball games will likely have wristbands um, so that our security and things like that know you're the student and you're coming in. So keep, keep track. Well, you will know how to get in. Is another thing that's great about living on campus. Your community assistant is going to have all that information for you. Perfect. So we have about 10 minutes left. Um, but I think Eric was really inspired by our Barrett discussion mm. um, because he wants to know if a student in a non-honors program, mm -hmm. could they transfer to Barrett? And if so, um, what are, what are right. the standards? What are the GPA? Yeah. How do you go about transferring into Barrett? Can right. you? Sure. I am a big fan of Barrett. I actually graduated from Barrett. I, I was in Barrett the Honors College. Um, and yes, you're absolutely welcome to uh, apply to be in Barrett while you're at ASU. Okay. You can apply two times, two different times in the, the ASU career. You can apply during the fall of your freshman year to enter in spring of your freshman year, or you can apply um, the second semester of your sophomore year to enter your junior year as an honors student. So you have those two options. Um, that's because there are a certain number of credits you need to complete as an honor student, and in order to get all the full benefits of being an honor student, they have those two times for current students. So you can either join Barrett during the semester, so the spring of your freshman year, or the fall of your junior year. So definitely, absolutely apply for that if that's something you want. They have higher admissions requirements. Um, I mostly know the admissions criteria for students coming directly out of high school, so double check the, the Barrett website, it's barretthonors.asu.edu, and you can go on there and look for how um, current ASU students or upperclassmen would apply to get in. Perfect, so we have time for just a couple more questions, so if you have them, make sure you get them in while we have Casey sitting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but what would you say are some of the big fall welcome events? I know there's the Luau and some of the welcome, but oh my gosh. what would you say are some of those must attend events? I love fall welcome. <laughs> it is my favorite week at ASU. I know tons of people love homecoming and they love all these other events. Welcome week is my jam, all right? It's where I have the most fun. Um, starting with move in, you have all kinds of events, and every campus has tons of, of moving events. So there are carnivals on campuses, there are festivals. You know, at Tempe, there will be the MU Takeover. It's a big dance party on campus. Um, we do have a Tiki Luau on uh, the Tempe campus as well, which is really fun. Our um, Pacific Island and Hawaiian students get together, and, and they um, do hula dancing and things like that. So it's really fun. Um, but really big events. Passport to ASU. Passport. And passports in two locations. Um, it's in Sunnival Fitness Complex mm -hmm. on the Tempe campus, and it's also in the MU. Yeah. So you have two options. And there are, uh, that's an involvement fair, so you can find out about all the clubs and organizations and fraternity and sorority life. Um, and there's an event like that. There's an involvement fair on all four campuses, because we definitely have clubs and organizations on all four campuses. So um, I certainly don't want anyone thinking, fall welcome happens at Tempe. It happens on your campus, yes. and it's great. The only day that you're probably coming to Tempe is that Tuesday. So Tuesday, Sun Devil Tuesday, it's a paint really big a. day. Um, yeah, you're probably going to paint the A over the weekend, mm -hmm. your second weekend here. But that is a huge event, too. So every fall welcome, we encourage all the freshmen to come out. Now it's on Saturdays, um, Saturday after classes start. Uh, and you go up A Mountain, which is a short, good workout. It's not really but a mountain. It's, it's, you're good. It's doable to so walk up. water. Yes. Stay hydrated. Very and important. All of the freshmen come up and they all get a Dixie cup of white paint and you whitewash the A. So the A is gold, 50 weeks out of the year. 
Um, but for the first two weeks before the first home football game, it is painted white to signify the start of a new year and starting fresh with our new class, which would be you guys. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then right before the first home game, it gets painted gold, and we keep it gold. And there is a, a group called the A-Team that guards the A. Uh, we have some rivals that like to try and paint it different colors, and we can't let that happen. So um, if you want to guard the A or keep it pristine and gold, that's definitely one of your involvement opportunities once you get here. But um, be looking out for the Fall Welcome app. So if you go to the yes. Fall Welcome website, again, asu.edu slash fallwelcome, you can actually download a mobile app that lets you see all of the events, the whole schedule of events, see where you need to be going, where, all of that. Um, so download that app already. You can already have it, and you can start planning out all the events you're going to go to. Quick note about Fall Welcome. We know mom and dad are probably coming with you when you move in, and we do have a couple parent events kind of that first weekend, but after that, Fall Welcome is really meant for you as a student. So um, it's really hard to break it gently with mom and dad that you're ready to start going on, and, and we know they'll get teary sending you off for college, but um, break, let them down gently and let them know that you're going to be okay and that you have an event to get to. Mm -hmm. So um, do keep that in mind. There's a couple parent reception type events during move-in weekend, but once the week starts, we're really ready to just have it be students so that you can be making friends. That's the best thing about Fall Welcome. Nobody knows each other, so get out there and be willing to just say, hey, I'm Casey, I'm a journalism major, and I want to go to this event. Are you going to that event? Let's go together. It's really the first and easiest way you're going to make friends, and Fall Welcome is full of events. That's ASU's number one priority during the first week is for you to make friends. After that, we're going to work really hard on your academics, make sure you're being successful at ASU, but that first week is all about feeling connected, feeling part of a community, and making friends. So two final thoughts on my end. Um, the first one, because you, you have talked about making friends, um, just a quick overview, if I if someone's interested in Greek life, how do they even start? Is there right. a website? How do we get involved? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can go to the Greek Life website. Um, I believe it's ASU that you do slash Greek Life, so you can look that up. Um, but during Fall Welcome, like I said, we do have Passport to ASU at Tempe, and all of the fraternities and sororities are out um, ready to talk to you about what makes their um, organization unique and special and something that you might want to be involved in. Um, we actually have 58, almost 60 social fraternities and sororities. So there's really something for everyone. Um, if service is really what you're looking for, um, or leadership, or philanthropy, any of those things, our, our Greek life is so involved in some really positive experiences in the issue, like our dance marathon and Relay for Life and all kinds of really fun stuff. A lot of our big days of service are done by our Greek Life. So um, definitely look into that. And then on the Greek Life website, issue.u slash Greek Life, you can look up what the recruitment process is like and rushing uh, the sororities. Uh, a lot of the sororities tend to have their uh, recruitment season during Labor Day, so pretty quick. Uh, and then a lot of fraternities um, can be uh, early in the, in the semester as well, but their pledge process might take a little bit longer into the semester. So lots of opportunities. We have a ton of multicultural um, uh, clubs and organizations as well as Greek life, so you can join um, a Latino fraternity, you can join an LGBTQ uh, fraternity, so there's so many options. And then your college might have a professional fraternity, so maybe you're not interested in a social fraternity or sorority, but uh, for instance, the business school has a really well-recognized uh, business fraternity, and that's co-ed. And what's great about it is it's one really great way to network. So as you are looking for internships or you're getting ready to graduate, you can go into that professional fraternities network and start finding other members that are already professionals and they might be able to help you find a job. Perfect. We have one final question. Um, so for international students, what are some things that they need to do right away once they come to ASU? Um, oh, yeah. For example, one of our students here, uh, their point of entry is New York. So is there seabed check-in? New York, or is it, is it Arizona? Good question. Uh, you, your CMS check-in is here on campus, so you're coming to ASU for that. And we are sending you all kinds of information on how to do that. So um, you definitely need to get here before the first day of classes. Keep that in mind, because um, that's what your visa is good for. Um, but get here, and then uh, we really encourage you to come by the 15th or 16th, because we do have international student orientation. So we know it's really hard for international students to come to campus more than once, and so the orientation uh, a lot of our domestic students have been doing since March 
is available for international students that week before classes start so that you can meet with your advisor, you can register for classes, we'll show you around campus, we'll get you moved in, um, and we'll do all kinds of activities for you to get comfortable with ASU um, and America because it is a big deal to be traveling from another country to come to college. So. Mm -hmm. We are really proud of you for choosing ASU, and we're going to make sure that we are walking you through every step. But definitely know that it's coming to ASU where uh, a lot of your steps are happening. Perfect. So if anyone has uh, some follow-up questions, how can they reach you? Great question. Yeah, if you have follow-up questions, I strongly encourage you to um, tweet out or Facebook us uh, on our, our social networks. You can find us at twitter.com slash future sun devils, facebook.com slash future sun devils, and instagram.com slash, slash future sun devils. Uh, we're on there. We love all your questions and your posts and your excitement, so keep using the hashtag future sun devil. Um, pretty soon as you're all moving in, we want to start seeing your pictures of how you're moving in, so we'll want you to use hashtag ASU bound. Um, we have some really great pictures from students last year doing that. It's so much fun seeing your road trips and your plane rides and your packed up cars and things like that. So definitely send those photos. Um, and then you can always reach your admissions representative. If you have more questions, um, you can go to asu.edu slash findmyrep. ASU.edu slash find my rep. You can put in your name and your state or your high school and it'll pull up your specific personal admissions counselor. That's nice. Yeah, it's really helpful because your admissions counselor is either assigned to your high school or your state, your, your region, and so they know a lot about the area um, and they can walk you through all your steps. You probably have some emails and some past communication with them already. We really try hard for you to have that personal uh, connection, but they're here, I mean, this is my office, I'm in the admissions office, and they're here on their phones all the time talking to you guys, answering emails, so please reach out. Don't feel like uh, there's any question you can't ask. We love answering your questions, so never be afraid to ask your question, um, because we definitely want to help you find answers. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Casey. You've answered a ton of really good questions. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing you guys all online. Thank you so much for joining us again. You can tweet at Future Sundels if you have any more questions or go online to find your rep. And we hope you have a great day. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you.